Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So today is finally a sunny day after a, over a week of rainstorm, and I am so happy. I feel so inspired and motivated to go outside and sketch something on this beautiful autumn day. So in the afternoon, I just decided to take a walk around my neighborhood and find something to sketch in my art journal because a sunny day like this is really precious in the fall. I love these golden trees. They're just so vibrant under the sunshine. Okay, so after walking around the block for about 10 to 15 minutes, I decided to sketch this street view with the golden green tree on the right hand side and the golden tree on the left hand side with, with a house in the middle. I think it's a really nice perspective. Okay, so here I'm sitting on my portable stool on the lawn by the sidewalk and here's my view right there. So when sketching in my sketchbook art journal, I always draw directly with a pen. And I never use a pencil to do preliminary sketches. So here back home, with the finished sketch beside me, I'm going to show you my seeing process. How I see and envision on a white blank space to be able to draw directly with a black ink pen. So now I'm drawing this square frame where I put my sketch inside. So the view I'm seeing is actually a two-point perspective urban streetscape. The first vanishing point is on my left-hand side, which is outside my frame. So very oftentimes when we're doing urban sketches, the vanishing point is outside our sketchbook or paper. So there's the vanishing point, and here is the, uh, the two lines that determines the shape of the street or road. And this line pointing up, and there's another line pointing up, framing the top of the tree, the top of the trees and the top of the house in the middle. So here's the tree on the left-hand side. It looks smaller because it's pretty far away. And the top of the tree is staying within that blue line on the top. If it's going over the blue line, it's fine because nature is never super stiff. And here's the tree on the right hand side. Now I'm drawing the rooftop of the house in between these two trees. The rooftop is actually going up according to perspective. Now I'm adding more blue lines so it's easier for you to see and understand the vertical lines and then the, around the middle to the bottom of the house. I'm going to add the second vanishing point on the right hand side and that's where the right hand side of the house is pointing to. This is the second vanishing point. And just adding these windows with reference to the blue lines and the bottom of the house is being covered by the bushes. And here is the car in the foreground, really close to me. Just making sure the wheel is staying within the blue line on the bottom so it's not going onto the sidewalk. Right there, the windows, the lights. So only the head of this pickup truck is included in my sketch. And now I'm finishing drawing the, uh, the rails of the house. And there's a fence behind the house, mostly covered by the trees. So here's my quick idea of two point perspective before you see my full process on location in my art journal. Okay, so now let's go back in time and here is the real location sketch. I started by drawing this square frame and then the date and the date. So 
So in the first two or three minutes, I envisioned the size and placement of everything, just like the way that I showed you in the beginning of this video. So I want to start drawing the top of the house first. So I started with the, uh, the rooftop, it's kind of like a diamond shape with chimneys. Now I'm drawing the top floor of the house with three windows. There's another house connected with it. It's a townhouse. And now I'm connecting this tree on the left hand side using very simple organic lines to show the form of leaves, tree branches and twigs. So I'm drawing really quickly to draw my impression of the tree textures instead of copying it. And now I'm starting to connect this car in the foreground with the bottom of the tree. So I see the car, the very simple trapezoid outline was placed for the wheels on the bottom. So after the outline, now I'm drawing the windows and adding more details for the wheel, the front lights. It's kind of like eyes of the car, really cute. This is like the mouse for the car. Okay, and adding a bit more little details for the inside of the car. Shade the windows with uh, pretty solid black lines to give more density for the car. Darker around the bottom. Adding some more smaller details on top of the car in between that tree. There's a sign there. And the rails. Now I'm connecting the rail with the head of this pickup truck. Much easier to draw compared to the car. And the wheel details. Okay, so after drawing the truck, I'm moving on to draw the vertical lines of the rails. As you can see, the rail sections are narrower, far away and wider, closer to me. Okay, now I'm ready to draw this big tree on the right hand side. Just focusing on the outline right now, just don't stress about the inside details. And there's a parking sign there. Now I'm starting to draw the trunk, branches, and twigs. It's very much like drawing a cauliflower or broccoli. So if you're not sure how to draw trees, you can practice with a cauliflower or broccoli at home. I think it's going to be much easier if you could master that first before drawing real trees. And now I'm using these simple organic squiggly lines to show the form of the layers of leaves around the top, very much like, cloud, like cauliflowers. And again, there's no need to copy. So I'm just drawing my impression. Just relax and try my best to add as much details as I can to give a more realistic texture for the tree. Adding some shade around the bottom that I observe. And now I'm moving on to draw this smaller tree covering the side of the house there, a very small tree there. Now adding this fence behind the rails. Again, paying attention to perspective again. And then adding the window frames of this house behind. Trust what I see. Okay, and now I'm starting to add more details like the solid shapes for the windows 
for this main house in the middle. Shading the windows is really giving more density to the house. And adding the bushes around. Tiny bit of texture for the bushes. And the sidewalk line following the idea of perspective. And adding these squiggly shapes to suggest the leaves on the street. Larger in the foreground. Okay, and just adding some final polish, some abstract lines and shapes in between. That's it. And here is the finished line work. It took me about 15 to 20 minutes. So when painting watercolors, we can control the density of the paint by adding more or less water. So for the sky, is it is a very translucent color compared to the solid houses and the trees so as you can see i wetted the sky area first with clear water and now i am grabbing some cerulean blue and mix quite a lot of water into it and just lay it very loosely and I'm also saving some brush strokes to show the moving air in the sky instead of a, a completely solid blue. The sky looks more vibrant and alive this way with the loose brush strokes showing. And a little bit more intense around the top, less water into the cerulean blue. Okay, I think that's for the sky. I'm, I'm not gonna overwork on it. Okay, so now I am moving on to the bottom half of the picture. Now I am actually adding a golden glow for everything, including the house and the trees, the road, and also the, the cars. And I want to show the energy of a sunny day on everything. Okay, so after that, I'm going to add a little bit of shadows by mixing in ultramarine blue and purple for the street. Because it's late in the afternoon, there are a lot of uh, large chunks of shadows. Okay, so now I'm moving on to painting the second layer for the golden trees. Just grabbing some orange and use these dotting brush strokes. Just punch the color on there very loosely. And painting the brown rooftop at the same time. And keep adding more orange for the top of this big tree. So when painting trees, bushes, and other organic objects, I like to keep my brush strokes. So for the sky, I kept my long brush strokes. And for painting the trees, I like to keep my dotting brush strokes. So it gives more dimension. Now I'm putting on a mix of Viridian Green mixed with Yellow Ochre or lemon yellow or medium yellow to create different tones of green. And just let the green wet on wet with the orange. And putting on some warm brown for the tree trunk. Painting brown for the fence. and adding the green for the bushes there. And using left leftover colors to paint the other random parts, like the lawn over there. Some final retouches for this second layer. Okay, so moving on to the third layer, 
I grabbed some burnt sienna to add for the top of the golden tree there. Because a golden tree had a variety of shades, including yellow, a little bit yellow orange, and the more intense color, the brown. Again, using very simple dotting brush strokes to show the texture of the leaves. Use some leftover blue purple to paint the windows and the shade part of the house. Now I am mixing ultramarine blue with purple for the shade color of this car here. There's some shiny streaks. This is pretty much like painting plastic packages. The cars have a lot of shiny streaks. I think it's a dark blue car. And same for the truck over here. It's a white truck, so just very little bit of shade on there. And painting the leaves on the street using a mix of uh, orange and brown. Now there's more feel of autumn with these golden colors added on. Dirt layer for the bushes. A little bit of shade of green. Another layer for the rooftop so it looks more intense. And same for this large tree here. I mix orange with brown or burnt sienna. So if we look very carefully at the autumn tree, it has many kinds of colors. It's really fun to paint colorful trees like this. Okay, so now I'm moving on to the final layer, the fourth layer, or um, I like to call it final polish. When the painting is pretty much done, but I still want to add some final contrast. Like for the street, I add another layer of shade color. So it looks more dramatic. A lot of darker colors like dark browns, burnt sienna mixed with ultramarine blue for the shade part of the tree. A little bit more green for that tree there. This is more like my observations in detail. Okay, now I think it's done. And here is my finished painting. So the watercolor painting part took me about another 20 minutes. And here is the finished sketch. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you very soon next time. Have a great day.